So being that much of gigantic structure of IoT, if you compare with the structure of the nowadays internet, so we could understand like if you have a worldwide spider hub spreaded over geographically entire globe that we can imagine like the internet, right? From extreme east to extreme west of the globe, from extreme north to south of the globe, the internet was spanned over. So even to imagine the internet structure is very gigantic. So now we are adding some more to that and we are calling it as IOT. Then you see this complexity and what will be the scalability of the IOT? So it is beyond our imagination. Then just I want to put a question. Is the IOT or IOE will be true or possible? So that is a simple question and which raised the curtain for definitely a big debate and a lot of research. Then here obviously sometimes I surprised thinking of sometimes what is the source of thought for the technological miracles nowadays, right? So we know the history right from the early human something like some thousand of, thousands of years before the Christ BC and of course after the Christ 2000 years something. So if you see that nowadays we are enjoying the technological advancement and its fruits at a greater level. What not we are able to do nowadays, right? We are able to live under the water, we are means uh, we are walking in the sky, we are already left our footprints in the moon and we traveled, of course, not the humans, but we made a successful travel to the Mars. What is the technological bounds, upper bounds for the technological advancements? Nothing, right? It's moving on. In such a case, sometimes I surprise the same, I'm coming back to that. What is the source of thought for nowadays technological thoughts? So if some source is there for the thought, definitely that will come into a concept which can be worked out into working models or the technological miracles. So sometimes I think there is a strong relation between the mythology and technology. So can we relate this? So I myself presume that the source of thought for the technological advancement nowadays will be obviously the mythology. Let me try to correlate these two for getting a source of thought for the technological advancements. You see, friends, there are some words, very few words I mentioned here. Uh, you should forgive me for deviating the concept for a few moments, but uh, I want to give you some orientation regarding the source of thought. See here, swapping, morphing, animation, virtual memory, cryptography, steganography, right? So these terminology we are very familiar with, being we are the computer engineers. Then if you see this, swapping. So we have a lot of programs for swapping. Of course, if you take a two-digit number and if you swap it, it may be a palindrome or may not be. But the swapping, suppose if you see, let me try to relate with the mythological uh, stories. If you see in Mahabharata, there is one character called Jarasandhu. So of course he was killed by Hemasena, I think. So what is the way of killing him is, Jarasandhu was splitted vertically and symmetrically into two halves and Bhima used to throw the left part onto the left side, right part onto the right side. And what is the boon to Jarasandhu is, the left part and right part again will come together and he will become live again. So many times Bhima tried. 
So then the project manager, Lord Krishna, give an indication. Why don't you swap the two parts? So then Bhima used to throw the left part under the right side and right part under the left side. Now even the two parts are coming close to each other. So the uniting is not possible and he was dead. So swapping concept is there even in Mahabharata time, if it is there. Similarly, you see morphing. So nowadays we use to suppose image morphing, video morphing, etc. Is it clear? Now because we are aware of the things, I don't want to prolong it on this. What about Lord Ganesha? He was morphed. Image morphing or not? So head is something and body is something. So Lord Ganesha was image morphed. If you see the animation, right, many examples we can take from the mythological stories like Mahabharata and Ramayana. So what about uh, the Lord Ravana? Of course, he is the Lord for the Rakshasas, okay. So in, in the normal situations, he used to have a single head. But when he wanted, he can get ten heads. Suddenly animated character or the char animated uh, stretcher he will get. And what about the lords or the uh, gods? So Hanuma used to enter into the Lanka with a very small monkey. But when Sita demanded to prove that he is Hanuma, he will become into the real Visparupa of Hanuma. So how it is becoming? So we don't know what is the technology being used for that and what is the algorithms for that. We don't know. Is it clear? But it was there. The concept is there. Was it not animation? Might be. Similarly, if you see the virtual memory, just now I am telling. So what is virtual memory? Virtual memory programming beyond the actual size of the RAM. Is it clear? Executing the size of the programs beyond the size of the programmable memory RAM. Of course, we will use the physical memory beyond the capacity of the RAM. So that means when in the normal situations, the size will be less and when it is required, you can go beyond the actual size that is available. So all the gods will have the capability of having different Swarupa and different Rupa of different sizes. Is it clear? Might be. Similarly, if you go over the cryptography. So encrypted forms, is it clear? So nowadays we are taking the plain text and encrypting and getting the ciphertext and using for different purposes. 100% correlation may not be possible, okay, please. Then if you see, suppose for example, the best example I can give you something like in Mahabharata, in Agnatha Vasa, suppose if somebody, let us try to recollect something like, in Agnatha Vasa, Pandavas are not supposed to be exposed to the public and they are supposed to spend one or two years. Then they tied all their weapons in a cloth and they kept on a tree called Jammi tree. So what was the mantra is there is, those weapons are not visible to anybody else except Pandavas. So they kept, they are succeeded in keeping their weapons in the encrypted form. Nobody is accessible. Right? And nowadays we are moved to even steganography, right? So hiding the text in the images, something, some, something like. Do you remember the last parva of Mahabharata? After all the Kauravas were swept away by the Pandavas, only Duryodhana is there. So with all the agitation over the desire to rule the kingdom, he went under the water of a pond. But Bhima Sena has one promise to kill him, no? So Bhima is searching, trying, searching, searching, searching. Nowhere Duryodhana is born. Where he was? So Duryodhana was taken over, no? He was hidden under the water. So there will be some techniques, no? Decryption techniques will always be there. So Bhima shouted something irritating Duryodhana, so finally he came out and of course he Right here what I want to say is, 
Definitely there was a source of thought very ancient days for the nowadays technological advancements and miracles. The concept was that. Now I can tell you that we know the history and science and technology developments and everything suppose over the past 2000 years, let us say. And I will ask a simple question. Will this technology be available and survives even after 1000 more years? After 1000 more years, will this IoT will be there? Will this internet will be there? It's a big question. Is it clear? Nobody can say, yes, it will be there. Who knows, global warming is going on, natural destructions are going on, entire thing may be collapsed. And again, the early human days may start. If that is the case, if we go back before thousands, thousands of years, because we are saying that the age of this globe is some millions of years, then was there the technology very early, early before the early human days? And once that was destroyed and again started in, the, in this era, might be, who knows, is it clear? See, all the concepts that were there in the form of the stories, but the stories cannot be imagined, no? Some source must be there. If it is written in the form of some textual description is there, means something was there behind that. Similarly, I can relate something like Puspak Viman, is it clear in Ramayana? So what is the property? So when how many people may occupy the Pushpak Viman, there will be one seat unoccupied. Is it clear? Nowadays we are moving very advanced in this materials, nano materials, nano electronics, right? And nano robotics. What is the limit for the technology? Who knows? Tomorrow may there may be the goods or devices or the systems or the transport vehicles which may be manufactured by different materials like the nano materials or the nano electronics and nano robots. So tomorrow a technology may be possible where suppose a flight, a flight was manufactured with the nano materials and other forthcoming materials let us say. So how many people may purchase their flight tickets? So after immediately occupying all the seats in the flight, automate because of the automation, because of the, because of the automation technology, there may be automatic enhancement in the material and automatically one more seat may be added inside the flight, elongating the body without disturbing the aerodynamics of the flights. We can imagine because whatever we are enjoying nowadays, it was a myth some years back. Is it clear? Why not the mobile technology 15 to 16 years back? What is the mobile technology before 2000 years? How many of them are having these smart mobiles? No. By that time it was a myth. Now it is a true, it's a fact we are enjoying. Is it clear? So definitely I can say, go to the next slide. So the myths, that means like the mythology versus technology, now the myths become the miracles. Because of the advancement in the science on technology, of course, our contribution is more as engineers. Right? So definitely, I can say that, go to the next slide. Uh, okay. You see here, what is this? Just to grab your attention and to make you alert, okay? Can anybody say what is this? The great actress, Savitri. Something you recollected, no? Okay, because I don't want to go for prolonging this. Next. Next one. So the same thing you see? The same kind of fantasy is going on something, right? So what is this? Can anybody say? Go to the next slide, ma. So is it is the Skype in 1957? And now we are talking about the Skype, is it clear? So definitely, there is no doubt, whatever today, fruitfully we are discussing much on the IOT for the last, well, that means for these two days, 
will definitely, this workshop will be fruitful along with this kind of workshops worldwide which leads to the reality of IoT in the very, very near future. So definitely you can say the IoT will be true and it will be possible. Right? So the next. Then here I can say Internet of Things. So definitely it will be something like uh, again uh, making some kind of adventure for me in front of you after you have been gone through very fruitful technical sessions for the last one and a half day. So that's why I'm not going into again what the other resource persons were covered to avoid boring of you. So let me touch some concepts related with the IoT and power computing because the theme is that the theme is that we cannot deviate from the theme. We are all gathered here to discuss and to know, to make a debate, to learn something and to make some suggestions and to pursue something. So that's why we should be within the theme, right? So next slide. So if you see and if you refer the literature, obviously, so who is the master? We are all slaves nowadays, is it clear? For the internet. Whatever you want, the internet is there to provide you, to guide you, you are. So if you search for what is an IoT, there are different versions, different orientations given by different people because being you are the computer science engineers, you can also give a valid, fruitful statement, knowing the concept. You know what do you mean by an internet? You know what do you mean by the physical and virtual devices you are using nowadays? And as you have attended the earlier sessions, you might come across with the vision of IoT. Right? So knowing these things, vision of the IoT, and what are the various physical and virtual devices and knowing what is the internet definitely you can frame your own statements defining what is an IoT right so by here you see a lot of groups are already started working on the internet of things and for computing something like here you see uh, IERC so this is an European research cluster on Internet of Things. So they were joined with ITUT, so the International Telecommunication Unit, and they are leading that particular group for the next generation networking technology, something like IoT. So they have given some kind of uh, statements you see there, because you are familiar with that, I am not going to stress much on that, right? Then you see here, at least suppose for a global infrastructure for the information society, enabling advanced services by interconnecting physical and virtual things based on existing, evolving, interoperable information and communication technologies. So these are all derived words. If you see the, suppose if you imagine the blueprint of an IoT architecture, Okay, somewhere cloud will be there, cloud is connected with the internet and at the edge of the cloud there will be a fog, at the extreme edge of the fog there will be a mist and within the mist your physical and virtual devices will be there. If you see that blueprint imagination in your mind, so simply you can realize the statement given by it. So these statements were also made from the architectural base but subject to the constraints see the note 1 and note 2 there, right? So go to the next slide. Similarly, if you go to the slide, suppose IERC, as I am telling you that this is the European Research Cluster on Internet of Things, they were also alone gave a statement some kind. Because I am engaging one session, no? even if I am, don't give the definition, at the end you may think, okay sir, don't know even what is IOT and engaged one session. So just you see this, this is uh, more something like, uh, more appropriate something, kind. 
a dynamic global network infrastructure with self-configuring capabilities. See each and every segment in the statement, you can go for much explanation of that actually. Right? So with one slide we can engage for one hour. Right. So self-configuring capabilities based on standard and interoperable communication. Because these people combined jointly given the previous slide statement. Here the overlapping will be there. And interoperable communication protocols where physical and virtual things have identities, physical attributes and virtual uh, personalities and use intelligent interfaces and or seamlessly integrated into the information network. As I have given you the title slide, the research scope in IOG and for computing, right? So how you can realize or how can you derive or how can you list out the various topics for your research if you are a uh, if you are an active researcher now in the area of this, you can take each segment of this statement, then you can go deep into that, make a very narrow, narrow, narrow slices, and if you sit together along with your peers, definitely you can do a lot of research on that. So the two previous slides give you a complicated statement, no? Four or five lines, difficult. Suppose the same thing, only thing of presentation. So if you split the previous slide statement and if you could like read like this horizontally from left to right, the readability will be good and easy to understand. Suppose something like you see, dynamic global network infrastructure. Nowadays you know that the robustness of the TCP by IP internet architecture nowadays. Is it clear? So what is the glue that is holding together for the nowadays inter internet, TCP by IP architecture. So it is very robust, very dynamic and whatever may be the user level networks that can be adapted by the upper layers of the TCP by IP architecture, if you are aware of that things. So of course, either from front to back or back to front, the same thing will be there, right? The same statement I have presented in a different way. So let me move on. Go to the next slide. Man. So instead of all the complicated terminology, how could we understand the IoT? In a simple thing. Something like you see here. Very simple means. Intelligent way of connecting physical or virtual things or devices to the internet that enable things to be connected anytime, any place, with anything and anyone ideally using any path, any network and any service. Very simple to understand. So as the terminology itself suggests, Internet of Everything, is it clear? IOE, Internet of Everything, whatever you state, that will be includes there. Next step. Then let me try to give some exposure to the present uh, sorry the current scenarios of the IOT and IOT and its uh, present scenario something like uh, some statistical data I used to collect from the web sources if you see that so the source is the gardener and how many IOT units are installed to the basic global dynamic infrastructure year wise some scenarios figures were given you see in the table the values are given in millions of IOT units and at the bottom I have pick up uh, 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 in billions you see suppose the second row in the table something like consumer based consumer based IOT devices how many they are connected nowadays something like you see if, it is, if you see in 2015 it is something like uh, about 2.9 billion 2.9 billion and if it is if you go something like in 2020 2020 it is something around 13 billion IOT devices related with only the consumer based IOT devices and you see the other cases in four categories of the IOT devices 
a projected score, uh, sorry, projected figures are like something like this. By 2015, that means the current year, something like, all together, you see that the bottom row in the table, in 2015 it is 4.9 billions of IoT devices are already connected. So it is beyond our imagination, is it clear? And you see the, how the figure is going to change in the very few years, that is something like over a period of 5 years. By 2020 it is going to be 25 billions of IoT units are going to be connected together. How many folds it is more? Almost 5 times. 5 times. 25 billion IoT. What is the world population nowadays? What is it currently? Approximately it is? Uh, I hope so, 7.4 billion world population. 7.4 billion. And by 2020, I think the world population is going to be around something like 7.9 billion, not even 8 billion suffer people. Then in 2020, how many IoT devices are going to be connected together? 25 billion. It is almost four times of the world population. That many IoT devices are going to be connected together. Can't imagine. Is it clear? And the other side, the statistics are saying, at present, nowadays, that means in the present scenario, 40% of the population, world population, are having the internet connections. 40% of the world population are having internet connections. So obviously, definitely, we are going to converge like a mandate thing towards the IoT in the very, very near future. We are going to see the roads in the very near future by us only, not by our grandsons. Because it is moving fast. Nothing is to be invented. Is it clear? If you overall, if you observe, is anything new to be invented for IoT? No. Devices are there. The global level dynamic infrastructure is already there, like the internet and the cloud concepts. Many firms were already established their clouds. And you have various kinds of physical and virtual devices. Only thing is you have to go for integration. So that's why it is moving very rapid. The five times, six times like that it is moving. Only integration you are supposed to do it. So you have to go for the science and technological support for integrating of all these things. But you see, if you could narrowly understand what is IoT, it is not just only connecting our smartphones with the internet and operating something remotely. If you see the vision of the IoT, there was a vast concept behind the vision. Whatever you take on this earth, commercially, individually, business, personal, everything, every setup, every organization, every operation is to be connected together. Not only our smartphones to the internet and operating something like, suppose if anybody asked for example of an IoT, okay, you, are, you can operate your home appliances remotely by your smartphone. This is very old version, is it clear? Suppose if you have an industry, if you have a university, if you have your own organization, how the entire setup is supposed to be connected or bring as part of the IoT. That is the concept of the IoT. Right? So definitely I, I hope some kind of miracle will happen if a small phone, something we have at our hand, Everything we will do. If you see the applications of the IoT, we could realize what is not going to be covered under IoT. What is not going to be covered under IoT? Nothing. If you see the application areas of the IoT. Right? So, this is the scenario, present scenario. Next, go to the slide. One. See here something like, as I am telling you that by 2020, 25 billion IOTs are going to be connected together 
and the intermittent connections if you see the figure is very large 200 billion intermittent connections and if you see the financial factors something like so at present something like in the year 2015 plus or minus so so what is the services iot supporting services contribute together in terms of money something like in 2015 it is 69.5 billion dollars so why i am giving this a statistical analysis is at least we will try to see what is the significance and what is the uh, rapidness in emerging this technology or how the near future is we are going to be a part of the iot and see the figure around by 2020 just over a period of five years see how much the iot supported services will be contributing something like it is creating a market for suppose you see 263 billion dollars in the next five years so obviously if you see if you could discover or propose or invent something in addition to the existing internet it may be quite difficult because of the global dynamic infrastructure but if you see the iot end like suppose if you stand in the mist computing okay if you are in the mist computing environment so if you take a particular example it will be within your limits you can contribute something if very one can contribute something who are very enthusiastic towards contributing something in the iot you may have your own devices in your premises and you can devise your own methodology how they are supposed to be connected to the iot it's a simple and a reachable technology is available the only thing is you have to think about some parameters something like what algorithms are required what communication protocols are required and you have to think about the scalability and particularly like the compatibility compatibility is a very very important parameter is it clear right because wide variety of devices are going to be connected to the internet of course in between the layers will be there like your fog cloud and other thing when wide variety of different types of or heterogeneous kind of devices are going to be integrated together to call it as an iot then the important parameter is compatibility is it clear so we are experiencing nowadays suppose if you can take the iphone and an android based smartphone what is the compatibility can you port any data from an android based smartphone to an uh, iphone it's a very difficult because of the compatibility problem so these are the big challenges in the case of an iot something like the compatibility issues because have you gone through the missed computing concepts so cloud computing is a centric the computation will be centric at the core level so the clients will be somewhere and the cloud will be somewhere and if you are utilizing the infrastructure of the cloud so there will be delay in communication as well as in giving the results if you are purely basing on the cloud because the client will be somewhere the cloud will be somewhere and in the very uh, congested global internet sometimes it takes much time so that's why the thought was extended why should we allow the client computations up to the core cloud why can't we do it at the edge so that is the base for the fog computing man. then even they started okay we are introducing one more layer in between the client and the uh, cloud and we are calling as the fog even then if you see nowadays the user and the devices are computational do you agree with me or not the user and devices are nowadays computational you have the large memories 
that means storage capacities will be there and a good uh, capable, capable processors are there. If you have a good configured smartphone, you are providing with a good storage, you are providing with a good processor, and how much, uh, what is the usability of your smartphone, tell me. Right? Definitely, it will be underutilized. Am I right or wrong? You have, so nowadays everybody is having the smartphones. So definitely all our smartphones are underutilized. Then why can't we utilize it for some computational purpose? Why can't we use it for some data processing purpose? Why should we communicate through the internet only or through the cloud only? Why can't we communicate within the local infrastructure? That is the missed concept. Is it clear? So that is how. So that's why here, everybody who is really interested in contributing something or in doing some research in the IoT, there is a lot of scope. And easy to grasp, easy to initiate and easy to end also. So you can those the, who are the uh, active researchers interested in this area, definitely they can go ahead without any hesitation. Right? Go to the next slide. So this is some slides because just I want to recollect from your last day sessions. So this is something like the uh, IoT integration. Suppose if you see the various terminology, concepts, everything were given in deep by uh, I hope the earlier resource persons, how this is integration. Just you see, it is a semantic diagram to give a pictorial citation for you and to, I want to make you to recollect already the discussed concepts, right? Just you see the structure something like. So there is a little IoT applications, IoT platforms supported by clouds and many other applications and you see at the bottom row, so the various applications are also cited there, right? Good. And you see this is building blocks of IoT applications or the CPS. Hope, I hope you have gone through these concepts. Something like cyber physical systems. And you see, so now you got a clarity, you know, we have the devices with the end users, then there is a mist, then there is a fog, there is a cloud, at the back end supported by the internationally dynamic global infrastructure that is the internet. So you see, then what is the basic uh, building blocks? Obviously, the user level infrastructure will be the building blocks. Is it clear? So what is the user level infrastructure? You may have your smartphones or other devices, suppose something like, we will see some examples in the later slides. And they were the minimum or the starting building blocks from where the data may be initiated or the computation may be initiated and it will be forwarded further depending on the application level. So depending upon the application level, complexity level, so we may move from the outer edge, that is our devices, to the inner core, that is the last one is the cloud. So devices, mist, fog and the cloud. Depending upon the complexity and the level of the application, you may move from the outer edge to the inner edge of the architecture in making the communication among the devices. Right? So that's why if you see here, in the left bottom corner, left bottom corner and right side to the red arrow mark, you can see that something like, uh, what is that? Uh, sensor, storage, and the programmability, control, processing, and the connectivity. These are the local infrastructure. Right? Next. And even a complicated, the overall architecture, something like you see, IoT of the architectural view. So on the left hand side if you see, so there are the layers, something like physical layer, network communication layer, then processing layer, storage layer, abstraction layer, and then services layer, and on the top you see the application layer will be there. So here, mostly because we are at the outer edge, we deal with the applications. And the designers will contribute something in the bottom layers where this integration mechanism can be provided 
carefully, supporting all the parameters like security, privacy, scalability, and compatibility. Right? Good. And here I have chosen some applications to have a overall view. Something like you see IoT smart applications, something like variables. I want to show you uh, some uh, orientation of applications, then we will see other things. See the variables and the smart health and wellness and aging well, smart homes and buildings, smart energy and a long list. Then we will see one by one. At a glance, I am not going much deep into that because we are not discussing the actual technological feasibility of any of these applications. Because up to some extent they were already existing and up to the maximum extent they were not at coming to existence. So we are in the process of discovering the technological requirements for making the IoT successful. Is it clear? So that's why I will give you the overall a conceptual orientation for some of the IoT applications. So see here, uh, this is a very simple example. Nowadays we are coming across a budget word, something like wristbands, particularly electronic wristbands for various uh, purposes, something like health monitoring, or for the fashion, or even for the passion also, right? So the considerable, considerable thing is something like the health monitoring systems. Your BP and your sugar levels, there are some strips or some uh, kind of strips will be there or some kind of sensors will be there, biological sensors which can sense the physical parameters of the human body and which can display or even can communicate your smartphones. This is a very uh, affordable price also. Somebody out of passion also we can buy and we can test how the communication is going to be between these wristbands and our smartphones based on simple IoT technology. Is that clear? Of course we can talk about the other side, very traditional way of discussing all these things. Personal area networks, we can say Bluetooth, we can say Wi-Fi or we can say body area networks. Is it clear? There are a lot, lot more terminology. But because now we are concentrating on the IoT, let us say the IoT technology is making possible in the positive way. So see here, this kind of things are wearable. And even if you see, now, uh, sometimes we use it to come across in the newspapers. So various wearable electronic gadgets for various purposes. Is it clear? Like heartbeat uh, symptoms or some kind of uh, security variables are also there. Nowadays, if you see, I think in the recent newspapers, you might come across with uh, some fashion technology students. They were designed a jacket for the uh, ladies for having a minimum protection from the Eve teachers or so. If they go and touch, they will get shocked. A very simple application, right? Next slide. So, and you see, this is the smart health and wellness and aging well. So this is also a health area where you can, nowadays you have so many handheld medical devices. So many handheld medical devices. If you add the flavor of IoT, IoT technology, IoT technology, let me call this the flavor to the existing biomedical instruments, handheld biomedical instruments you can communicate with other computational devices, higher level computational devices, something like your computing machines, like your desktops or laptops. From there, you can process up to a big data analytics. Is it clear? Suppose a sample data may be collected from your body and that can be communicated to a higher level computing machine like your desktop and which was already connected to the internet and suppose the experts may be somewhere and the biomedical data sets were available globally and this sample data may be compared and to, that can be taken for analysis and you may come back with a final result or the report. Based on that, the treatment can be taken. Right? 
So this will all make the comfort, the comfort level of the human beings will increase, but of course at the cost of so many things, right? And this is a very simple example where you might uh, come across with something like uh, the uh, discussions, it's ready uh, somewhere else, and something like it's a smartphones and weddings. So just now I told you, know, you may be remotely available in your office, and you can control the home appliances at your house, but always you see, there will be a comfort and advantage, and there will be a disadvantage, and there will be challenges also for the advancing technologies. Is it clear? Suppose feeling that you are very happy and you are a part of the technocrats. And suppose because you have IoT connection with your phone and your smartphone. Okay, let me check it. Or because this is there, let me use it. Okay, you have switch on your TV and while dressing up to the office, and you went to the office without switch off your television at home. Now you went to the office, okay, because I, my smartphone is IoT connected. Let me switch off my TV from the office. Why should I at home? Because the provision is available. My smartphone is at my home. Hand. What is the challenges? So assuming that, suppose you went to your office, I am taking a simple example, not much damage, because of the television only, it may be run until you get back to your home. Suppose by the time you went to your office and you wanted to switch off your TV which is running in your, at your home, your mobile device is out of battery. What happens? This is a challenge, is it clear? Provision is there, very good. And even driving your car, now you recollected that, okay, while I am coming out, for a drive, I forgot to switch off my TV. Okay, you wanted to operate from through your mobile, but your mobile phone is running out of the battery. Then what could you do? So until you return back to your house, your TV go on running, increasing your power bill. So that's a challenge. So definitely I can infer something like related to the energy optimization techniques in the IOT. If you see the overall um, structure of the IOT, most of the devices connected to, with the IOT and mostly nobody prefers a connection oriented devices as part of the IOT. Is it clear? Now we are boosting this much regarding the IOT and tomorrow the IOT was existing. But suppose if somebody says it is possible only by means of the connection oriented devices, physical connections, a wired networking enabled devices, will it be flexible? No. You will ask for the wireless. Is it clear? Because I am smart now. So when we are smart now, we want to go for the wireless. When you go for the wireless, then what is the basic parameter is the energy optimization because for any electronic system or the device which you want to operate definitely require the power. So that is the biggest challenge in wireless sensor networks also even are in the wireless networks, is it clear? How many advantages are there? We know that but even then the energy optimization is a big big challenge in the wireless networks. So this is. So that's why here, being a technocrat, you must concentrate on the energy optimized IoT devices. Is it clear? The lifetime of the usability of the device, not the wearability of the or usability of the device, but the operational period of the IoT devices must be as long as possible. So for that, you have to go for energy optimization techniques or the battery utilization simply. Is it clear? Next. So this is you see a very beautiful picture I got somewhere so that's why I kept here. This is the smart energy. Is it clear? Nowadays the power grid problems, the government policies problems, every summer there will be a power cut. So that's why you see even slowly the people or the public or the government even realizing that like our IOT, 
it is extending nowadays the government policies are encouraging to go on our own renewable energy sources like the solar energy okay if you are constructing a house no problem you don't want to go to the electricity department okay purchase some solar panels establish or deploy it on the roof of your house get your own energy sources right so where it is come down from the center like the cloud to the outer iot device so 